Hi guys, this is a review for Paths by Matt Mello. So in case you haven't heard, because it's kind of going under a lot of people's radar, I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's called Paths, P-A-T-H-S. Um, it's Matt Mello's take on branching anagrams, and it's kind of his whole thinking as crazy as he is and as brilliant as he is, it's his thoughts put into branching anagrams. And I'm telling you, this is a phenomenal piece of work. This PDF, and I'm not kidding when I say this, this PDF can change the way branching anagrams go from here on out. He His work is such another level. The, the way that he thinks is something that I cannot do, I wish I could, it's really something to live up to because he is genius. And I actually made a list of the contents because there's so much in this PDF, I didn't want to miss anything. So basically what Pats is, it's Matt Mello's presentational ideas for anagrams plus anagrams. So it starts with path number one, and I'm not going to go into the presentation, but it starts off with Matt telling you, here's one way to present anagrams, and it works brilliantly. And the whole point of his presentation is that the spectator is saying yes and no, but no is not wrong. No is not a miss. Usually when you do a branching anagram, you say, this letter's in your word, this letter's in your word, and they say no. And you say, oh, no, that's not, but it looks like that letter. It's actually this. And they say yes. And you say, okay, and this one's in your word. And they say no. And you say, oh, well, that sounds like this one, which is... Matt takes care of that. You say, again, I can't really, I don't want to show an example because that's the brilliance of it is the presentation, but basically every no answer has a purpose and every yes answer has a purpose and neither one of them are right and neither, neither one of them are wrong. Um, yeah, I don't want to say anymore because I don't want to give it away, but again, whenever you get a no from the spectator, it's not a bad thing. It's not no, that's not a letter I'm thinking of. It's no because you need to know this. I can't explain more without giving it away, and I so want to tell you guys because it's just genius. Okay, so with this first path, there's one presentation, and you get player one, which is the first anagram, which is an anagram for any Super Mario Brother character. So with this one anagram, you can tell them to think of any nostalgic Super Mario Brothers character that they played or loved as a kid, and you can tell them this. Then that goes into player two, which is the second anagram in the book, which actually extends that previous anagram by making it any Nintendo character. Instead of just Super Mario's brother, it can be any Nintendo character. I never really got into Nintendo. I, I it may be taboo to say that. I don't really play Nintendo. I never did. So those two um, anagrams didn't really fit for me. I, I, won't, I won't ever use them because I just don't relate to them. Um, the next one I will use the next one is the birth month, and he has an anagram for getting anybody's birth month, and it's perfect. Ah, oh, it's so good. Or if you don't want to get their birth month, their friend's birth month, or their mother's birth month, or whatever, but it's perfect. And then we move on to path number two, and path number two is similar to path number one, but a slight tweak in the presentation, which makes all the difference. And in this path two, we have triangulation which is a genius of a concept for anagrams. Essentially what triangulation does is it allows you to name multiple categories for them to choose from. So in most anagrams you say something like, think of a birth month, or you say something like, think of a Nintendo character, right? And that's kind of, that's one category for them to think of. In triangulation you actually name three different categories they can choose from. So you say you can think of one of these, or one of these, or one of these. And each category has a lot of options. Um, it's so good. There's a male version and a female version, and it seems sexist, but it's not. It's just, you, you wouldn't want to do the female version on a on a girl. You could probably, I mean, sorry, <laughs> you, you, you would want to do the female version on a girl. You would not want to do the female version on a guy just because there's a part of it that you just wouldn't want to do. You probably could do the male version on a woman, but it's really meant for guys. So that's why he did that. There is definitely a separation in the categories. Um, like, for instance, I'll just say one of the categories. One of the categories for the female is a piece of jewelry you would wear. So, I mean, you don't want to say that with a guy because that's going to be vastly different than the women. So that's why there are a male and female version. And again, this is so brilliant. It just takes anagrams to a whole new level, and I really do believe this. Um, being able to name multiple categories, and then also Matt has a way at the end to reframe it to make it seem like the spectator could have thought of literally anything. Essentially, at the end, he says a line that makes them believe that those three categories you gave were just a suggestion. 
just examples, but they don't know that. So in the end, they, they leave going, wow, I literally could have thought of any word and he would have been able to guess it. Oh, it's so good. Oh, something else, speaking of guessing, these presentations, path one and path two, make it not feel like a guessing game, which is a problem with branching anagrams. So many times, branching anagrams feel like a guessing game. It's like, is this letter in your word? No. Oh, well, is this one? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I knew that. Well, is this one? No. Okay, but this one is? Yes. Okay, good, good, good. It feels like a guessing game, which is not fun for the spectators. This does not feel like a guessing game. It's a very involved process that your spectators are invested in, they're involved in, they have to answer, they're answering, and they're enjoying it. And also, this is another interesting thing about it. With path one and path two, as you name the letters, those are almost tiny hits every single time. Whether they say yes or no, it doesn't matter. But be I, again, I don't want to get into it too much, but be every time you name a letter, it's it's a hit for the spectator. It's, it's, okay, yeah, I could see how you see that. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. And they're just constantly saying yes, 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 yes. And then at the end, you know their word. Oh, it's so good. Okay, then we move on to path three. And path three is like, a whole new dimension of branching anagrams. So where path one and path two were kind of presentations for anagrams, which is completely new, path three is like, okay, here's a new way to look at anagrams. And it's not really a branching anagram anymore. Essentially, in path three, the, the spectator only answers one time. That's all. So they, they never, they don't say yes and no, yes and no, yes and no. They only say stop whenever you get to a letter that has their that is in their word, okay? Or um, what I prefer is they don't even have to say anything out loud and they don't, I'm not gonna give it away because I'm, I love it too much and I, I'm gonna use it, but there's even a way to do it so that they don't have to say anything. You just name letters and, and you look at them, they don't say anything, you name letters and then you tell them the word they're thinking of. I mean, come on, they don't say yes, they don't say no, you're not asking questions, you're simply naming letters, looking at them, trying to get information and then you tell them the word. So good. So from that, we go into card coding. That's the first way that this is used. So basically, from a list of, I think, five cards, maybe six cards, you're able to tell just by looking at them, saying a few letters, you're able to tell what card they're thinking of. So the idea is you could probably force these five cards. They don't know that they've been forced. They look at them, they think of just one, and you can tell them the card they're thinking of. So good. Um, that moves into what he calls codex. And Codex is essentially kind of teaching you how you could use this for a book test. So let's say you're doing a book test and there's six big words, right, for them to choose from. Well, this is a way to get which word they're thinking of of those six words or seven or eight or however many words without them saying yes or no, yes or no, just simply by observing them. They don't even have to say anything out loud and you'll know which word they're thinking of. Again, so good. Um, Next, we get into one that I actually love. It's called intersecting. So intersecting is similar to triangulation, but instead of doing it all for one person, you separate it into three different people. So essentially, you, you name three categories. You say, we're gonna use this category, this category, and this category. You say, I'm gonna turn around, and I want you guys to decide amongst yourself who's gonna think of what category. So you can, you, whoever wants the first category, you can hold up a first finger. Whoever wants the second can hold up a second. Whoever wants the third can hold the third. So you're gonna decide amongst yourself who is thinking of which category. That happens while you're turned around. You turn back around, you look at one person, you name a couple letters, <clears throat> you say okay, you look at the second person, you name a couple letters, you look at the third person, you name a couple letters, and you're able to know exactly what word each person's thinking of. And no, it's not like a Hoy book test. You're not like, I'm seeing giraffe and purple and the sun, if I named your object, sit down. No, it's not like that. It's like you're thinking of giraffe, you're thinking of purple, you're thinking of the sun. Those are not categories that are actually in here. I'm just an example. So I love this approach because you're able to know not only what category they thought of, but also their exact thought in that category. It's super impossible. It, it is so, so good. And it's genius. It is absolutely genius. Whenever I read it the first time, I was fooled. I was fooled reading it. I was like, how could he get this information? And then he told me how he got that information and I was like, of course that's how he got the information. How did I overlook that? And because of that, I know this is gonna work in the real world. If it can fool me reading it, it's gonna fool a spectator performing it. Oh, it flew right over my head. It's genius, it's bold and it's genius. I love it. Next from that, it goes into a brief little essay called Anagram Architecture. And essentially that's Matt saying, here's how I want my anagrams to work. 
I want this to happen on the first one, this to happen on the second one, blah, 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 blah. And it's, here's how I make it. And then that also goes into a couple of questions you can ask, which can drastically cut your anagram in half. By asking one or two questions, you can cut your anagrams in half. Good work, good work. Um, along with that essay, there is an astrogram, is what he calls it, and that is a star sign anagram. The most beautiful star sign anagram I've ever seen. I've ever seen. You only ever have to ask two letters at the most. Sometimes only one. You only ever have to ask two letters. Come on. And again, if you use a presentation from path one or more likely path two with this, you're not asking, is this one in your word? You're asking for a reason. There's a purpose for you asking them for them answering yes or no. It's the best, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. It's the best star sign anagram there is. And I love Peter Turner's, but this one is blows it out of the water. Um, and then also in that same little section of the anagram architecture, there is triangulation from before. Remember the one with the male and female? Well, there's a new version which cuts your memory work about in half. So you have um, triangulation female 2.0 and triangulation male 2.0. And again, this is asking one simple question at the beginning, which cuts your anagram time in half. So instead of having to ask five letters, you're having to ask two or three. That's the idea with that. And then you end with a mammoth of an idea called alphagram. An alphagram is literally an anagram for the alphabet. Now think about this. Yeah, think about an anagram for the alphabet. It's hard to even imagine. It's hard to even comprehend. How, do you, how does that even work? I'll just say this. You don't name letters. You're never like, are you thinking of a C? Okay, is it a D? Okay, is it an F? It's not like that at all. Instead, um, I'll, that's all I'm going to say. You don't ever name the letters and say, is this the letter you're thinking of? That doesn't make sense. So Matt uses alphagram to actually get a three-letter word. So he does alphagram three times in a row to get the first, second, and third letter of this three-letter word. Thus, he knows the word. I don't know if I would use alphagram three times in a row. I would maybe use it once, maybe twice, and then guess at the last letter, like maybe the first and last, and kind of guess at the letter in the middle because it's probably a vowel, that kind of thing. Um, but I think this is genius, and I say that a lot about Matt's work because literally he is a genius. I'm not over-exaggerating when I say that. If I ever review Matt's work in the future, you will definitely hear me say genius again. I just, I can't talk about Matt Mello without saying Genius. Okay. Now that that's been said, what is he? He's a genius. There we go. Now that I've said that so many times, Alpha Graham is genius. Yes. Oh, it's genius. It is so good. Again, it's, it's, it's someone, Matt is someone who doesn't stop where everybody else stops. For years, we've had branching anagrams and for years we've said, here's what a branching anagram is. Okay, this is it. And Matt says, here's what a branching anagram is, but what if we do this? And what if we play with this? And then before long, it's this over here. Matt is willing to push those boundaries and he absolutely does that in the paths PDF. If you do not have it, seriously, what are you waiting on? If you do any mentalism whatsoever, if you've ever wanted to do anagrams but been worried because you thought it felt weird, if you do anagrams and love them but think maybe there's something more, if you do anagrams and love it and think you're the best anagrammer in the world, you still need this PDF. It will teach you something that you did not know before and it will elevate your performance to a whole new level and your audience will thank you. Your audience will feel the difference. This person, the audience member who gets performed with Matt's technique versus with Atlas's technique, it's two different experiences. And I love Atlas. I think he's genius. His work on anagramming is beautiful, but it's just a whole different experience from Matt's to Atlas's. It gives you a different feeling inside. And for me personally, I prefer Matt's approach. It's just me. Some people may prefer Atlas's. It's a lot more mind reading a lot more realistic but for me i definitely prefer mats so again what are you waiting on you need to pick up paths by matt Mello right now it's cheap and it is absolutely worth the price you pay okay i think that's enough ranting about what is perhaps the best release in the mentalism world in 2017 and 2017 has only just begun okay i'm done again if you do not have paths just go buy it that's all i'll say go buy it